I'm Brandon Clore and I'm banging all right. Whether it's out of the comments or the throughway, we're checking out all the great places Woodbury has to offer. When you go behind the sign. What's up everybody? Welcome to another installment of Behind the Woodbury Sign. Now if you find yourself in Woodbury and in need of medical attention, there's one group of trained professionals that are going to be there on call 24-7, 365 days a year. We're talking about Woodbury's Community Ambulance Corps. Let's go inside and see Debbie. Hi Debbie, oh, how hi. are you? Come on in. All right. Welcome to Woodbury Ambulance. After you. We like to think of this as our family and our home. Um, this is our common area. Okay. And I'll bring you over here. You can take a look at it. So when members are waiting to go on calls, as these members are right here, they are able to watch TV, hang out, and just relax. Dan and Jessica. Um, this is our office, where our officers work. We have two bedrooms because if the weather is bad, very often we will sleep here at night. Um, sometimes somebody may have a very early shift in the morning and they'll want to stay here as well. So we have the ability to put four people in every room. We do also have three full bathrooms with showers. Then over here, we have a full kitchen. And it's normally stocked with refreshments. We're never oh, short oh, on drinks can. and snacks. <laughs> In case anybody gets hungry, a lot of times They'll be on call for the entire day. They won't be able to get home for dinner, lunch. Um, so we have that here for them. Okay. Pop something in the microwave and you're all set. Okay, let's go see the ambulances. Our ambulances, we have three fully operating ambulances, one of which, our newest right here, Unit 227, a state of the art ambulance for the rhythm, to, um, which we're going to show you right now. In addition to the ambulances, we also have two fly cars, that's what we call them fly cars, and basically they are used to go directly to the scene by our EMTs so they can bring them home when they're on call and then respond directly from their homes. The fly cars are stocked with basically all of the supplies that the ambulance has other than the stretcher. So we can't transport in a fly car, but we can respond and provide emergency care. So why don't we go into um, our newest ambulance and show you around. This is the back of our newest ambulance, 227. Uh, it's fully stocked as a BLS ambulance, basic life support. Uh, it has most of the gear that you would require for us to work independently uh, on a call for any injuries or illnesses that we encounter during the uh, course of a call. Um, in front of us over here, we have basic first aid supplies, bandaging, things like that. Uh, we have diagnostic equipment, blood pressures, uh, pulse, uh, oxygen content. Uh, we have CPR equipment in the uh, in the ambulance. Radio equipment for the communications to uh, the hospital with other agencies, uh, and oxygen, basic oxygen supply, and things like that. Um, really, we also maintain a full stock of teddy bears for every child in the town. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, and uh, oxygen breathing assistance. And there behind you, 
is uh, one of the tools that we use for CPR calls. It's called a Lucas device. Uh, it's an automated CPR device. It allows us the opportunity to do perfect compressions for the most part uh, throughout the entire trip to the hospital without uh, exhausting the EMTs and the crews. Uh, in route, also it ensures that fatigue, the road conditions, things like that won't affect CPR as well. Um, and it is automated, it's battery powered, uh, and it would be, it would ride on the patient throughout the trip. So Sean, this gets strapped right over your chest? Yes. You hit a button and off you go? Yep, it's set right onto the spot where you're supposed to do CPR with your hands, and it'll continue to do it at the proper rate and without interruption of compressions throughout the entire trip to the hospital. Amazing. Correct. This piece will go under the patient, right under their armpits, this will fit right above and snap right into here. Once you turn it on, this just goes continuously. Amazing technology. It is. It, it really is. is. It's the, one of the biggest helps that we've ever had. You know, it, for when you've had to do CPR for 45 minutes to, to a hospital, it gets tiring and exhausting and you, you will inevitably degrade the CPR that you do on people just for physical limitations. So this allows us not to have to worry about that. All right, so I had a chance to sit down with Dan Pozzola, the newest member uh, and EMT of the Woodbury Ambulance Corps. And I got to sit down and have a couple questions with him. So I'm really honored to sit down. Um, you know, Dan, tell me a little bit about wh what made you decide to join in the first place. Like, what was that fire that, that brought you said, you know what? I need to go to Woodbury Ambulance Corp and volunteer some my time here. So what, what, what was that? So when I was in college, I um, I was actually in charge of a homeless food room where we would go down to a park in Washington, D.C. and see a bunch of, um, we called them friends on the street, um, and kind of get to know them and um, become their friend. Um, and then when I graduated, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I work at a pharmacy, I was just kind of going day to day and then on Facebook my mom uh, saw an ad for um, Uber and it, and she told me to apply and I kind of shook it off right away so I was like no I'm not going to do that and then secretly I applied next thing I know Sean Graham emailed me I started doing it and I've loved it ever since uh, we're really a good family here uh, they kind of put me under their wing um, and now I am an EMT so I took a semester long class to become uh, an EMT, which is an emergency medical technician, um, and now I'm in charge of patients in the back and loving every day. So Dan, so let me get this straight. You didn't have any prior experience coming into here. They were able to train you and teach you everything that you needed to know. They showed you the ropes from top to bottom. Yeah, so the only medical experience I had was watching Grey's Anatomy, which isn't really <laughs> any. Um, and, um, <clears throat> Yeah, I just I got CPR trained here, um, and they get put me onto a class. I mean, the calls we go on, they let a lot of people do a lot of different things. So at first, you're just a um, just a driver, which we don't like to say, but you just drive the ambulance and get all the stuff that they need, um, and they'll train you, they'll show you how to use all the equipment, and then after six months here, they'll let you take the EMT course, which is up in Goshen. Um, and they train you from everything to how to lift up a patient to how to properly put in an airway in their, um, in their mouth to uh, open up the airway and keep them all up, so. Excellent. And, you know, we just did a tour of the ambulance and we saw all the fantastic te technology that uh, Woodbury Ambulance Corp has. Um, now, one thing a lot of people don't know, Dan, is that Woodbury Community Ambulance is 100% donation funded, correct? Yeah, we get all our money from uh, donations, so please donate, and um, from bringing pa uh, patients to the hospital. So the insurances will pay for that, um, which they don't pay that much. So we always need your donations and volunteers as much as possible. So they're basically 100% self-sustaining uh, community life-saving organization yeah and you know and so if you ever have an opportunity whether you live in the area or not make sure you know if, if whatever you can do you know they greatly appreciate it it goes a long way yeah even if you're not in the area um we have our one of our new members is actually from tuxedo and she's gonna just stay here at the building for her whole shift um so yeah i mean even if you're not in the area and you just want to get out there and volunteer 
you could just say the full shift here. So we do from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and then from overnight from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And we need at least two people, one EMT and one driver. So like I said, even if you don't have any experience, um, you can always drive and just keep watching Grey's Anatomy and you'll be good to go. <laughs> <laughs> So Dan, you've been doing this for now just a little over a year. What what keeps you here, man? I mean, and what what can people expect, and what you know? Why should they come here and volunteer? So the family life here is awesome. Um, that's really what keeps me coming back. I mean, I pick up so many extra shifts. Um, when the tones drop, we call it the tone shop. Um, when they drop, the adrenaline rush that you get is just something that you can't imagine anywhere else. Better than um, any roller coaster, that's right? That's true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Six Flags got nothing on this. Um, so yeah, once those tones drop, even if it's a stub toe, it's still just that adrenaline rush that someone needs you. And being needed is something that's awesome and you can't ever get it from anywhere else. And I'm sure the satisfaction, you know, at the end of the day, that uh, you and the crew here, you know, literally take part in saving people's lives. I don't think there's much more satisfaction that you can get from that. That's true. I fall asleep with a smile on my head every day. When you get a chance to when, sleep. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Maybe, true. maybe you, you like the bottom bunk or the top bunk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neither. <laughs> well, Dan, it's been a pleasure sitting down with you. We greatly appreciate your time and your volunteerism and uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. We're very, very proud of you and we're very honored to have you and your crew here. here. Thank you, and thank you for letting us share this experience with everyone. You got it. Thank you. All right, so now I'm sitting down with Debbie Volbercheck, who, Debbie, what, what's your position here? I am president of the ambulance and I've been president probably for about three or four years. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, tell me a little bit about the history. So the ambulance was formed in 1953 um, and it was formed as a nonprofit, um, all volunteer ambulance. I'm very, very proud to say that it has kept that status for all these years. And in fact, we are still all volunteer and still nonprofit. So what that means is that we are not supported by tax dollars. We are totally self-sufficient. So we rely on donations from the community and the community is extremely generous. We're very, very thankful for Thank that. Thank you, Woodbury. Yeah. Um, and also from patient billing. The issue with patient billing is that many of the insurances do not pay for ambulances. So there will be many times where we'll go on calls and receive absolutely nothing or a minimal amount <clears throat> that would not even as much as cover our expenses. So it becomes very difficult. Therefore, we rely completely on our volunteers because if we had to pay for EMTs, we would be out of business tomorrow. We just cannot do that. Um, we have about 40 volunteers, probably about 25 of which are actively writing. And um, there is no cause for the volunteers. So it's, it's wonderful. We are so thankful to all of those wonderful um, members that we have that are so giving of their time um, and of themselves. What is the, 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 the area that you guys cover, the outreach, and included in that outreach area, if somebody lives outside of Woodbury, can they still volunteer here? So we cover um, road-wise, we go up 32 to the Cornwall line, um, okay. and we go the other way on 32 down to Tuxedo to the train station. Um, the major roadways and highways, the New York State Thruway, approximately five miles north and five miles south okay. of the toll booth. Um, we cover a section of Route 17 going towards Monroe, um, right past the Walmart Shopping Center. Um, additionally, in one of our most busiest areas is the Route 6, Route 293 area. Um, unfortunately, that is an area that is just ridden with accidents um, and we're there quite often. We also cover the towns 
uh, the town of Woodbury, village of Woodbury, and part of Harriman. It, in addition to that, um, we would include all of the shopping centers that are there, and that is a major source of our um, our calls, um, namely Woodbury Commons. It's about 20% of our calls. Wow. So it's pretty, <clears throat> pretty big. Um, we also have Woodbury um, Center and the parking lots of the, Har the Walmart area. The parking lots are ours. The stores are part of Monroe. In addition to that, we also do substantial mutual aid for surrounding ambulances. We cover a lot of calls in Monroe, a lot of calls, okay. um, as well as tuxedo. So we are quite busy doing mutual aid as well. So if someone lives in those areas, are they able to apply and volunteer here? Absolutely, you really can live anywhere. Um, we obviously um, look for Woodbury, Harriman residents, but we certainly encourage residents of neighboring communities to join as well. Okay. Um, we, as, as you saw before during the little tour of the ambulance, we have two very comfortable bunk rooms, which they can sleep in. Um, they can basically hang out here all day, um, watch TV, do whatever they need to do. If you are a Woodbury resident and you live within a few miles of the ambulance, we provide you with a radio. So you get the radio, you take it home. When a call is toned out by headquarters, which is the Woodbury Police Department, all of the people that are on schedule to ride that day will call in. They will get in their car and come down here. We will meet hopefully within about two to three minutes, and then we'll be on the way to the call together probably another three to five minutes. So we try to um, maintain a, a maximum of a 10 minute response time gotcha. from the time that the call came in. <clears throat> okay. um, but going back to the original question, if you live, let's say in Tuxedo or Cornwall or Monroe and you want to join us, um, we certainly would love to have you, but you would not be able to respond from home. You would have to stay here during the time that you're on call. Okay. So Debbie, tell everybody out here watching, uh, you know, some of the perks of joining here. There are really a lot of perks. Um, first of which I look at as being a part of the family. Um, we are all very, very close. Um, our families even get involved. Um, we have social gatherings and um, everybody really cares about each other and supports each other. Um, you tend to really make friends. It's a great, great thing. Um, secondly, for the adrenaline junkie, I hate to say it, um, it's a, it's, it can become you know exciting. It's not the typical boring situation where you're at a job and it's the same thing every day and it's paperwork and so on and so forth. This is something that you don't know what's going to happen the next minute. And to many people, myself included, that's kind of exciting. Um, it offers a lot of variety. It's always something different and always something unexpected. So that's fantastic. Um, the other thing is we have something called a low SAP program. And what that is, is um, every year that you volunteer and meet a certain um, number of calls, it's not that many, um, you qualify for a pro the program and you get an amount, a dollar amount added to your retirement. It's sort of like a retirement program. Okay. When you hit age 62, you get actually a small retirement. Um, and I really shouldn't even say it's that small because Judging from what um, some of the retirees have recently received, um, you can either get $500 a month for five years, um, $300 a month for 10 years, a check directly for $30,000, or $200 a month for the rest of your life. So it's not 
small change. Mm -hmm. It's it's substantial, yeah. um, and it's something that. And some jobs out there don't even offer those Absolutely. pensions anymore. So if you're looking to pad your retirement a little bit, Absolutely. a little volunteer work goes a long way. Absolutely. So I would definitely consider that a major perk of becoming part of the ambulance. And then finally, the last thing and probably the most important is the satisfaction that you get from helping people. Um, you go to a call. It's tough. A lot of times it's very, very tough. But when that family comes over to you at the hospital or the patient even and gives you a hug and starts, you know, basically tearing and telling you how much of a difference you made, you know, it's, it's their lowest time in their life, a lot of them. And you have to be there strong for them in many ways. And, um, it's it's such a wonderful feeling when they either come to you after the call or maybe they'll write you a, a little note afterwards and let you know what a difference you made in their life so that is an amazing feeling and um, one that that we encourage every resident of Woodbury to find out about um, getting the chance to feel so we do, once again, encourage you, please call us and consider volunteering with us. As people age out or as they move out of the area, unfortunately, we lose them. And we have to be able to replace those people. So we ask that anybody that has the slightest interest in joining the ambulance, please give us a call. Um, we're at 928-6464. Call, leave a message. We will call you back. Um, we'll be happy to let you know um, all the specifics of volunteering. Um, just in a nutshell, you don't have to have any experience. You do not have to become an EMT. In fact, we'd love to have drivers, people that drive, people that assist on calls, assisting on getting patient information. Um, there, is so, there are so many um, spots available here, um, including even clerical. We're looking for anybody that is willing to get involved to help us as a volunteer. So we, we highly encourage you to call if you have any inkling to do so. And I'm sure that when they give you a call, you can tell them all about the amazing uh, recent awards you've gotten. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> very, very, very exciting. Um, we were just, probably about two weeks ago, awarded the Orange County EMS Council Agency of the Year. So we are absolutely thrilled about that. And one of the reasons that we got that is um, because throughout COVID, and throughout all other conditions, we have remained strong. Other agencies in the county hire people, they hire EMTs, they are supported by their towns or villages, they get money from the taxes that are collected. We don't do any of that. We're doing it on our own. So we were absolutely thrilled to be recognized for that. Um, and very, very excited. It really gave a major boost to our members to be named as the Agency of the Year. Um, additionally, we also had um, the BLS Provider of the Year out of Woodbury Ambulance, and that was Anthony Maggio. Um, Anthony was um, a longtime member uh, for over 20 years. Um, Last year, he went on several COVID calls bravely, walked right in as many of our members did, walked right in, no hesitation. He contracted COVID and unfortunately he passed away. Horrible, horrible story. Um, a death that is directly linked to his bravery and everything that he gave to this agency and this community. Absolutely. And um, we were really thrilled also to um, know that he was recognized as the BLS Provider of the Year in the County of Orange. He's now going to go to the state 
finals as well as the ambulance for agency of the year and um, we will wait to see what happens there hopefully we will go further in the um, competition uh, I think it's a showing so <laughs> I don't think you have anything to worry about with that <laughs> so Debbie I just wanted to thank you for the time today uh, letting us come in see everything that goes on here learning a lot and I hope that you out there also learned a lot uh, and you know, if, if, as Debbie said, if, if you want to volunteer, they have a, a ton of different ways that you can help out. And also one of those ways is donations. So help out when you can, please, all right? So Debbie, thank you very much for sitting down. We greatly appreciate your time. And uh, I look forward to seeing you, just not with the cars and the blinking lights yes, and everything. That's for sure. That is for sure. Okay. That is for sure. Okay. But thank you so much for joining us and um, we are greatly appreciative. That's it for this episode, but join us next time as we continue to explore all the great things that Woodbury has to offer when you go behind the sign.